terms of just a little housekeeping in terms of presenting the evidence uh, this morning, uh, my th thought was, as witnesses are called, this being uh, Mr. Roman's motion, that counsel for Mr. Roman would be the first, and any witness that they call, uh, then in order of the listed defendants, uh, there would be the opportunity for additional direct or cross-examination, however you want to characterize it, and then the state on the tail end of that. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Merchant. Is there anything that we would need to take up before calling the first witness? Um, Judge, we would invoke the uh, rule of sequestration. All right. So to that end, pursuant to Rule 615, I would ask that any witnesses subpoenaed or expected to testify at the hearing today that they should remain outside the courtroom until called, and they shouldn't discuss their testimony with any other witness or watch any kind of live proceeding or recording of the testimony until the evidence is, excluded, uh, is concluded or they're excused from uh, being called today. Are there any exceptions to this rule? None from the state. Any from the defense? No, thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Abadi. Yes, Your Honor. And, uh, prior to starting uh, any testimony, um, the state would just like to address, um, I guess, the topic of the matter of submission to the court as it relates to what was represented um, during the previous hearing um, as it relates to uh, witness testimony, uh, specifically the testimony of the uh, former uh, law partner of uh, Nathan Wade, uh, that would be Mr. Terrence Bradley, and what... Uh, or what the state would like uh, the court to understand and realize that is that in preparation for this hearing um, in speaking to witnesses uh, in uh, doing the uh, additional research as it relates to the comments that were uh, represented by a counsel, specifically uh, counsel for uh, Mr. Roman, uh, Ms. Merchant, that uh, we've been able to determine that the claims that the defendant has asserted and did assert and during the last hearing on Monday are not only legally meritless, but are factually unsupported um, by the statements that Ms. Uh, Merchant made to the court. Um, what I would say are they're patently false. Um, they are uh, egregious misrepresentations of uh, what is uh, believed that Mr. Bradley would say or even knows. Um, what I would uh, bring to the court's attention in my speaking with uh, the defense counsel for uh, Mr. Bradley, um, Mr. Chopra, is that Anything that he, any knowledge of anything he would have, would be protected under the attorney client privilege. Um, he would assert that. Um, and that privilege has not been waived uh, by Mr. Wade. More importantly, the representation was made to the court that Ms. Merchant spoke to Mr. Bradley and that Mr. Bradley represented that he had first hand knowledge from speaking to the several witnesses um, that he would be able to impeach with the statements she represented um, that there was a relationship prior to um, Mr. Wade being appointed um, special prosecutor and that um, there was issues with cohabitation that he would be able to directly impeach um, those witnesses. That is patently false. And speaking with Mr. Chopra, um, those are misrepresentations that are not true. They are um, for the purpose of harassment and undue burden uh, to the district attorney. And we asked to renew our motion to quash. And uh, the only hearing we should be having is a hearing as it relates to sanctions for um, the defense counsel's lack of candor that's required by not only statutory law, the professional rules of responsibility, and case law. And we uh, asked that we move into a hearing that, is, that is related to the sanctions due to the misrepresentation and flagrant um, falsehoods that have been spread throughout the world um, in, in an effort to affect this case and to keep it from moving forward. Um, with that, Your Honor, um, that's our request. So just a small matter of housekeeping. Yes. All right. <laughs> Ms. Merchant. Um, Judge, uh, first, the witnesses haven't been sequestered, so I just ask that they be sequestered before we argue this or have any more arguments. I know Mr. Wade is still here. Um, so we just ask that he leave since he is under subpoena. Um, that. Let's, let's start there. Mr. Bowie. Well, I have to agree when testimony starts that the rules of, sequ rules of sequestration um, would require Mr. Wade to leave, but that we haven't started testimony. It's his argument. He's lead counsel for the case, and he has every right uh, to be sitting at the table. Okay. Ms. Merchant. Let's hear from some witnesses, Judge. Let's actually hear some sworn testimony under oath 
Um, I have made proffers, and it just seems like all we're going to get is objection after objection because the state clearly does not want any witnesses to take the stand, doesn't want the truth to come out in front of the court. This is a very important issue, and we need to have witnesses. I have a good faith basis. We learn I have a good faith basis. And Mr. Bradley is not my only witness to this good faith basis. It is just happens to be the evidence I proffered at the hearing when the state first tried to keep all of the other witnesses off the stand. I was forced to proffer certain testimony to get over the hurdle to um, refute their motions to quash. I did that. I used Mr. Bradley's testimony to do that. He is not the only witness that can state that there was a relationship prior to Mr. Wade being hired. Um, the first witness that I'd like to call is Robin Geerty. Not Mr. Bradley. No privilege issues. Let's start with her. Your Honor, when we have um, additional argument or matters to be brought up, do we want to do it by, by just stand up and, and with re relation to what's just been said by Mr. Abate or by you only hearing from this merchant at this point? I just need to know the, the court's protocol on that. Sure. So I think at this point we just need to take these issues one at a time. And as you've joined the motion, I think defense counsel would have the opportunity to weigh in. But if, again, at any point, if uh, I'm just hearing the same thing over and over again from each separate defense counsel, I'm going to reserve the right to say thank you. I, I appreciate that. Right. I only ask for the opportunity to be heard on the invocation of the attorney-client privilege and the burden being on the uh, individual raising the privilege to prove that a privilege in fact was in existence before we get to it. That's what I asked. Sure, understood. So, Ms. Merchant, I do want to put it back to you, though. The uh, issue raised by the state this morning is that the, essentially, as I would summarize it, the good faith basis that you did put forward on Monday um, did not exist, right? So, why wouldn't we start with Mr. Bradley and see where we go from there? The good faith basis does exist. So you basically have them saying it's not true and me saying it's not true. So we both, they think they have a good faith basis, I think I have a good faith basis. I have a huge good faith basis for everything that I put in every single motion. Um, that's going to come out. The reason I don't want to call Mr. Bradley first is for hearsay objections, quite frankly. Um, and, you know, normally we don't have to disclose how we're going to present evidence. Um, I'm okay doing that here. but. Based on the rules of evidence, hearsay, and privilege issues, what makes the most sense, and we've spent a lot of time thinking about this, what makes the most sense is for us to have Ms. Yeary testify, and if you want me to proffer what I anticipate she's going to say, I talked to her last night, she's going to say that there was a personal relationship that began in October of 2019. She's going to testify to that, and she has personal direct knowledge of that. It's not hearsay, and it's not privilege. She's going to take the stand. She's terrified, but she's going to take the stand and tell the truth. And then I plan on calling Mr. Wade, because at that point, I can overcome their motion to quash and bring Mr. Wade, bring him to come. Then I can go through privilege issues with him, and then I can have Mr. Bradley testify. And we won't have to have an objection to every single question I ask Mr. Bradley, an objection to hearsay, an objection to privilege. So that's how I plan on presenting the evidence, because it makes the most sense. And I think I'll be able to overcome any privilege objections. But we can talk about that when Mr. Wade takes a stand. All right, Mr. Vi. Any last words on starting with Ms. Yurdy and going from there, taking it a witness at a time? I mean, uh, no, but my, I guess my final response would be that, as Your Honor pointed out, during the last hearing, Ms. Um, Merchant's entire representation uh, for good faith was all solely based on uh, Mr. Bradley. In fact, I remember the court saying that the star witness presented or provided by the defense is Mr. Bradley, and you asked a specific question. Ms. Merchant, well, Mr. Bradley, does he have first-hand knowledge from these people, each one of them you named, the lawyers plus the investigators, as it relates to the claims uh, that were made? And her answer was yes. I can definitively tell you the answer is no. And Ms. Merchant has not spoken to Mr. Bradley, according to his counsel, B.C. Chopra, who is you know, outside and can represent to the court the things that I've represented. And he has maintained and represented that everything that she plans to go into or ask is protected by attorney-client privilege. And the only point of this process and this procedure, um, as it relates to uh, the motions that were filed, is to create a spectacle and to create harassment to the district attorney of Fulton County. And we request that the only hearing we move forward is sanctions for counsel's lack of duty of candor to the court and to 
uh, council. All right. Well, I think you certainly put her on notice if that is actually the case. But at this point, I have someone saying yes, and I have another person saying no. And so I think that conflict in the evidence that we noted on Monday is still exists, and that's where we are. And we'll see what uh, how the evidence presents itself. So with that, Ms. Merchant, are you ready to call your first witness? Yes, Judge. All right. We call Ms. Yearly, and I know Mr. Parker's had emailed before, and I quite frankly couldn't keep up um, about a Zoom, so I don't know if it's on Zoom or 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 if it's on Zoom. Ms. Partridge, or, uh, sorry, Mr. Partridge was joining us by Zoom, but Ms. Yearly is here in person, right? Mr. Partridge, I believe, represented that his client would be more comfortable if he were here in person, and that, due to his conflict in Richmond County this morning, couldn't occur until this afternoon. I think that is a reasonable request, but not the state's business. Um, the witness is here. If her, if her attorney is able to join right now, um, perhaps that can be something that is addressed with Mr. Partridge in the court. But uh, I want to alert the court that that was the representation of the witness would prefer not to go forward without the client present, and that's certainly a reasonable request. Sure. I think the latest I've seen, though, that was that Mr. Partridge was going to be able to join by Zoom. Okay, great. I didn't, I, I didn't know that he had recognized that <coughs> Mr. Partridge had um, affirmed that, that perhaps that was an email this morning that uh, I missed. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know either, um, but the state seems to know that Ms. Yerdy is here, so I guess she's not appearing by the Is Mr. Partridge here? We'll find out. Just for everyone's information, uh, we did convey the Zoom link to Mr. Partridge this morning. Uh, I think the last exchange we'd had is that he can join us by Zoom, and apparently is elected not to do so. So I don't really know what else we can do with that. He was noticed of the hearing. We provided him a link, and we haven't heard from him at all. So I think we need to go forward. Call Ms. Yearly. All right. Your Honor, before we go forward, we have uh, business documents that were certified and filed yesterday evening. Uh, sorry, filed this morning, emailed to opposing counsel yesterday evening. We wanted to make sure that this was part of the record before any testimony was taken or before the proceeding. Uh, the proceeding commenced this morning. All right. And so, in your mind, this satisfies Fulton County's uh, subpoena in this case? Correct. Okay. If you could hand that to Ms. Merchant and. We'll take it from there. Okay, and I don't know why he doesn't look good. Okay, I have an original for the court. Uh, Ms. Monroe, uh, if you could just provide it to Ms. Merchant, and yeah, if you could copy. just stay on call, we'll let you know if we need you again, okay? Okay, thank you. <coughs> All right. Were we bringing in Ms. Yurdy? Yes, 